Hello, today we're going to be looking at the knapsack problem from Cavus. In this problem, we're given the capacity of the knapsack and a number of objects. Each object has both a value and a weight. Our objective is to pick a subset of these items such that the total value is maximized. In order to solve this problem, we're going to be implementing a well-known dynamic programming algorithm. Let us take a look at how the 0-1 knapsack algorithm actually works. We're going to be using dynamic programming to build up a two-dimensional array, which will allow us to easily query our answer at the end. We're going to be working with the second test case and the sample input. Each row represents adding in a different element, and each column represents a different capacity. The reason we only go up to six in this case is because our knapsack is just slightly larger than six. When we have finished populating this grid, each cell is going to tell us what the maximum value we can obtain given some capacity and a subset of the items. This will all become more clear as we run through this example. So to start, we're going to look at the very first row. This represents the absence of an item, so it is clear that all the values in this row should be zero, since there's no way we can get value with no items. So let's fill those with zeros. When we move to the next row, we're only going to be considering the row that comes before us. So in this case, we're going to be trying to add in the first item to all of the cells above it. We start with the very first cell. The red arrow indicates that we haven't included the item, and the green arrow indicates that we have included it. If we haven't included it, then the capacity hasn't changed, so we're still in the same column, and the value hasn't changed, so we simply copy the number over. Looking at the green arrow, you'll notice that we moved over four columns. This is because the first item had a weight of four. We also added five to the value of the cell we're coming from, since the value of this item is five. So we place a five over there. The next few cells are filled much the same way. But once we get to this cell, you notice that the green arrow actually extends out of the array. So we're going to need to make sure we check to see if we're inside of the array before trying to update it. Moving to the next one, you notice that we could try not including the first item, and that will give us a value of 0, but we've already found another way that we can get a value of 5. So rather than overwriting that 5 with a 0, we're actually just taking the maximum of the two. Finish filling the first row like that. Moving to the next row, we're going to be doing much the same thing. In this case, our item has a value of 4 and a weight of 3. So we'll fill the first few cells here. We're into the same situation that we saw before. We don't want to copy the 0 to the cell below it because we already have, we've already found a better answer. But in this case, the 5 is better than the 4 that used to be there. Do the same thing for the next few cells. We repeat this process until the entire table has been filled. Take a look at the value in the bottom right corner, which is 9. This indicates that the maximum value you can get is 9, which is the correct answer. There's one more thing we need to do to get our final answer, though. We actually need to figure out which items we used to get the maximum value of 9. It turns out that there's a nice trick we can use to get that information from this table. We start at the end and we look at the cell above it. If these two cells have different values, that means that we included the item from that row. So the one with value of 2 and a weight of 1. Since it was a weight of 1, we're going to be moving one column to the left. So we're now on that 7. We do the same sort of thing. We look at the cell above it. They have different values, so that means we also include that item. It has a weight of 2, so we move over 2. We repeat this process again. 4 is different than 0, so we've included that item. We're working with a weight of 3, so we move over 3. And the last one, 0 and 0, are the same, which means we didn't use that item. Therefore, to attain a maximum value of 9, we use the last three items. 
All right, so now we're ready to begin implementing our solution. I'm going to be using Sublime Text Editor, and I have a number of uh, snippets and plugins which I'm going to be using to speed up the process. So start with our basic template here. So the first thing we need to do is read in our input. So they're going to be giving us one test case after another, and we don't know in advance how many test cases there's going to be, so we need some way of detecting when we're done with the input. So as soon as the buffered reader returns null, that means there's no more input to deal with. So we'll be using that. Um, so the first line contains two numbers. It contains the capacity and the number of items. So we're going to be splitting that. So line.split, so we'll split by spaces. First part is the capacity, so and they give it to us as a double, but we actually don't care about the floating point value. We're just going to be rounding it down to the nearest integer, since all of our items have integer weights. So we're going to be storing that as an integer. And we're also going to be storing n, which is the number of items. All right, so that's our first line of input for this test case. Next thing we want to do is read in the values and the weights for each of the items. So we're going to be making arrays to store those. So values equals new int. There's n items. And we're also going to do this for weights. All right, now we're going to read in n lines. I'll use a for loop for this. We'll split the line by spaces again. values of i is equal to integer dot value of split zero and we're going to do the same sort of thing for the weights. Alright, so now we have all of our input. Let's make a comment here. Read input. Alright, now we actually want to compute our answer. And we're going to be returning our answer in the form of a list of integers, which represents the indexes of the items that we chose. So we'll actually implement this method in a few moments. But for now, we're going to need to give it the values, the weights, uh, the number of items might be useful, and also give it the capacity. All right. And once we have our answer, we're going to be outputting it. So the first thing we need to output is the number of items that we have. Um, so this is just the size of the return place. So this is the number of items that we chose. Okay, and we're going to be iterating over this. Indexes.size. All right, and we want to put a space between each of the items that we're outputting. So the very first one that we output won't have a space. So if i is equal to zero, we're not outputting a space, meaning if i is greater than zero, we do want a space. So I'll output a space, and then we're just going to be outputting the actual item. So indexes.get i. Notice that we're outputting the indexes, not the values or the or the weight of the item. And once we do that, we want to print an end of line character. And this will output our answer. So the next step is to actually implement the knapsack method that we referenced above. So let's do that now. So we make a static method that returns a list of integers, which will be our indexes. And it's called knapsack. So the first thing we handed in was an array of values, and then an array of weights, and then n, and then the capacity. All right, 
and we need to create a two-dimensional array to use. So let's call this best value. And the size of this array, we need n plus one rows because we need a row to represent the absence of an item and then one row for each of the items. So we need n plus one rows and we would need capacity plus one columns because we needed to represent zero to capacity inclusive. So that's our array. We're gonna be iterating row by row. And we're gonna be starting at one and going up to n. So this considers each item. All right, so the actual index of the item is i minus one. So we're gonna make a variable just to make that easy so don't get confused, i minus one. And we're going to try going from each of the cells in the previous row. So we'll make another for loop for this. Well, j equals zero. j is less than or equal to capacity. All right. And inside of here, what we want to do is try including the item, or and try not including the item, and update the array accordingly. So if we were to include the item, the total weight would be j, which is our current column, plus the weights of item index. And the total value, if we were to include the item, would be best value, i minus one, and this will be j, our current column, plus values item index. Sorry, this should be a plus. All right, so that's the total weight and the total value if we were to include the item. And we can only include that if the total weight is less than or equal to the capacity. Otherwise, we're outside of the array. If, if this is the case, then best value i total weight is equal to the maximum of whatever was there before and this new total value. Total value and whatever was there before. All right, so this is if we're including the item. We also need to try not including it. And if we're to do that, then we simply Take best value of i in the current column equals math.max. The value that there, that's there right now, or the value that we are copying down from the cell above it. i minus 1, j. All right, so believe it or not, this is all we need to do to generate this two dimensional array. Now what we want to do is trace back through this two-dimensional array and generate the list of items that we chose. So we're going to create a list of integers, which will be the indexes of the items. Make a new array list. All right. So our current column that we're starting in is going to be the last column. So int column equals capacity, which is the last column. And we're going to be starting at the bottom row and working our way up. So int i equals n, and i greater than zero, whatever is minus. Okay, so if this cell is different than the cell above it, then we added the item. So we're going to be checking the value of this one. So with the one right above it. So subtract one from the row. Still the same column. So if it's different, then this means that we added the item. So the index of the item is gonna be i minus one. Items chosen, we're gonna add item index. And then what we need to do is subtract off the column the weight of this item. 
colon minus equals weights of item index. Alright, so this will generate our list of items, so at the end we simply need to return it. Alright, so thank you for joining us today, and I hope you enjoyed this introduction to dynamic programming. There's lots of other cool stuff that you can do with dynamic programming, so I hope that we have a chance to get to that later. My source code is going to be available on Problem Vault, so go check that out if you would like, and I'll see you guys next time.